Hello again, my dear students, and welcome to the second part for chapter number four, dealing with motions. In the previous part, we have discussed together the energy Van der Graham crossing the source the channel and the drain, which can have the form of an NPN junction or PNP junction, depending on whether your MOSFET is an N-channel MOSFET or a P-channel MOSFET. Now, in this part and the next part, inshallah, we are going to discuss another two interesting points related to the MOSFET behavior. In this part, we were going to focus on what we call the metal oxide semiconductor junction, which is actually from which we have the name MOSFET, which is a metal oxide semiconductor field electron. So what we are going to do in this chapter or in this part is that we are going to uh, go deeply inside this metal oxide semiconductor junction and source of all the energy band diagram at different buzzing conditions. And we can express here what's meant by the inversion region and what's meant by the, the accumulation region. In the next part, we are going to discuss a very interesting and very important thought for those who are going to work as an electronic designers, which is the most capacity. What is the MOSFET capacitance and how we can express this MOSFET capacitance in terms of voltage and different operation parameters. So now please let me start sharing my presentation slides and continue with you chapter number four under the title of MOSFETs. Okay, so in the Termination of part number one, we have deal together with what's called the IV characteristic curve for a MOSFET, where we have found that we have different region of operation for a MOSFET. First, we have what's called the cutoff region when the threshold voltage is, or sorry, when the gate voltage is below the threshold voltage. In this case, theoretically speaking, we can say that we have a zero current flowing inside the MOSFET as the bridge or the channel connecting the source to the drain is not connected yet. Whenever the voltage is greater than these threshold, then we start to have our most of operating, either in what's called the tried mode, where it is still we are still far from the pinch off point, or after the pinch off, after the, the VD equals the VD sat or equal VGF minus V threshold. And in this case, we have what's called the situation. And we also have discussed together the concept of the situation, either, either sorry, in an ideal manner. When you see that at saturation, the resistance seen by the uh, current flowing from the source of the drain is equal to infinity. That's why you have this horizontal line, which indicates an infinity resistance, because basically the resistance here equals to one over uh, the slope. Or, I, or typically, or realistically speaking, whenever you have a realistic MOSFET, then you should have what's called a, uh, an output resistance around which is equal to one over slope again. So this is the difference between the realistic IV curve and the ideal IV curve. So now what we are going to discuss is another point of view. What is the next point of view? In the previous, in the previous uh, lecture or in the previous part, we have discussed together what we call the source channel drain uh, energy band diagram. In this energy band diagram, my dear students, we were interested in having something like, let me start drawing it. Something like that. I don't think if you can see this red line. Okay, so this is typically what will do. It's a cross-sectional energy band diagram. Now we are interested in another energy band diagram. Now we are interested in a band diagram which should look like yes this horizontal sorry this vertical energy band. so our it's better to use a laser pointer i think this is not so clear so our current energy band diagram or our current interest in the energy band diagram will be in this direction please monitor or observe my laser pointer is this this one so we are considering a metal an oxide and a semiconductor interface and we are going to plot such an energy band diagram under different um, biasing conditions. So let's start with such an energy band diagram. 
what if we plot an energy pentagram in this case and how this will look like? Okay, so let's do it. Okay, so now we have a metal, a semiconductor, and an insulator in between. And based on our previous lecture, we have already known that whenever we have an energy band diagram for a metal, this energy band diagram is defined by the Fermi level of the metal, what we call the EFM, and the work function, which is the distance or the energy between the Fermi level and the affinity level. That's why, my dear students, I told you that our previous lecture with metal semiconductor interfaces is the bridging lecture towards Mosul, because this is what we have learned in chapter number, uh, number three and what we will reflect it now in chapter number four. So whenever we have this energy band diagram, then it should be, it should look like that. That's it. Here we have an affinity level. As far as our device is under thermodynamic equilibrium, then we should expect an horizontal Fermi level that's why you have EFM equal to EFS. And in, 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 um, in order to make our design a bit easy, we assume here that phi S and phi M are equal. So that we have that, such a flat band. This is actually a very important and a very tricky point because sometimes, maybe you will see this in your tutorial program. Sometimes you will find that the energy band diagram is banded. However, sorry, this electrical field or this oxide is banded. However, EFM and EFS are, are aligned together. This is simply due to the, the difference between phi M and phi S. So in order to make our study easy in this example, we consider phi M and phi S are equal and EFM and EFS are horizontally aligned because your device is under thermodynamic equilibrium. As you know, your substrate, here we are dealing with what's called a P-channel motion. So your substrate here, is a P time. And this is reflected here. As you can see, EFS is more close to the valency band rather to the conduction band. That's why we call, that's why this is a B type substrate. And this is a metal. And usually an oxide is just, just an empty gap because we don't have, or the energy gap for an oxide is very, very large and we are not interested to consider it within, within, within our energy, energy band. So this is typically, what happened whenever we have an energy pentagram for a metal oxide semiconductor junction and a thermodynamic equilibrium. Again, a thermodynamic equilibrium means that no external voltage is applied to your device. That's the case. No voltage applied to the gate, no voltage applied to the source, no voltage is applied to the drain. That's why we have such a structure. Okay, this is the first scenario. This is the first example. What? What if we apply a negative voltage to the gate? What will happen if we apply a negative voltage to the gate? Actually, the first impression that you should stop me and told, told me, yeah, this is a wrong voltage. We know that in order to operate our MOSFET, we have to apply a positive charge, not a negative charge to the gate. Because when, whenever we apply a positive charge, electron will be accumulated here and constructing a channel. However, Herein we are applying the alternative. We are applying a negative charge to our most not a positive charge. Accordingly, let's start to think what will happen. As far as you apply a negative charge to your most, that means that you are repelling the electron and you are attracting more holes. Or in other words, this layer, this channel layer just below the oxide will turn to be more and more p time because simply you are attracting the holes, which is the majority in the substrate, you are attracting the holes to be here. Accordingly, what you should expect is that your boundary between the, the oxide and the semiconductor should turn to be more and more p. More and more p means what? Means that more and more closer to the valency band. So what will happen is as following. As you can see here, this bend, bending indicates that this point is very, very p-type with respect to this. Because in this point, the distance between the Fermi level EFS and EV is too small with respect to this point. So this is a normal piece of straight, but due to the negative voltage applied to the gate, this region, which is typically this region, turns to be more p 
with respect to other, other of the material because a huge amount of wood will start to accumulate in this region. That's why we call this the accumulation region or the accumulation phase. So an accumulation phase is an anti-operation phase. In, in order to make your MOSFET operate, you have to convert it into an N-type. You have to convert the channel to an N-type. But what is the inverse of this process is to put an, a different polarity. So now your MOSFET needs a negative positive charge, so you put a negative charge. And then what, is ha what happens is that you are accumulating the majority carriers, which is holes. So you turn your substrate to be more piton. Another important observation that as far as your device is not under the thermodynamic equilibrium, then as you can see, EFM and EFS are not uh, or are no longer horizontally in line. So this is a big difference between having this and having that. So here we have aligned EFM and EFS. So this is a thermodynamic equilibrium. Here we have aligned EFM and EFS. So we don't have an aligned EFM and EFS. So there is no thermodynamic equilibrium. And the difference here, which is the difference between EFM and EFS, represents the negative voltage applied to the gate. So this is the first, or this is actually the second scenario we discussed together now, which is the uh, 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 the, uh, the binding of the gate with a negative. Okay, that's perfect. So this is about the gate. So let's turn to the other scenario. What if we apply a positive voltage to the gate, which is actually the normal scenario? Herein we have two stages. The first stage is what we call the depletion stage. So let me start to. Uh, uh, describe it in a more detailed manner using my whiteboard because this is actually a very important stage in our uh, most. So let's turn the presentation for a while and let's go to the whiteboard. Okay. Here. I think this. Okay. Here we have our MOSFET. So this is the source. This is the drain. And this is the region in between. So what you are going to do, my dear students, is that this is an oxide layer. And here is the metal contact. And here you connect your possible. So once you connect the possible, let's starts to describe or demonstrate what will happen once you start to connect the positive voltage. So before connecting the positive voltage, this region, which is the channel region, is a beta, is a beta because the straight is a beta. However, the source and the brain, of course, are right. So let's say make a very clear example. Let's say that okay, as this this is a beta region, let's assume that we have 10 holes, or sorry, 100 holes, and 10 electrons. So holes are, are the, major, the majority, and the electrons are the minority. What is the first uh, stage after inserting this positive charge? What will directly happen after inserting this positive charge is that electrons, sorry, holes are going to repel due to the positive charge. So what will happen that holes will start to leave this region? So as far as holes are starts to leave, so this 100 will start to decrease. Tell, for example, it reached 10. So you have 10 holes and you are still have 10 holes. Which means that in this stage, your material turns from being a P type to be an intrinsic. Then the next stage is this positive charge will start to attract electrons. So electrons will start to increase. 
by capturing electrons from the minority as a minority carrying the straight to be collected here to the channel. So this time it starts to increase, or for example, it becomes 60, and the hole is still that. So the material then turns to be an end. So this is the, the scenario from the thermodynamic equilibrium where there is no voltage applied. Then you apply a positive voltage with a very small value. So it's just three pal holes. So the number of holes starts to decrease. Then you have what's called an intrinsic and then it becomes okay. Okay, so this two pros or this process we divide it into two sub processes. The first sub process is responsible of getting grad from the majority carriers, which is holes. So I, you, are, you are getting grad from holes due to this positive charge applied to the gate. So this is a peak type material. And you are getting grad from holes, which is a majority carrier. So the number of key carriers starts to decrease. For example, here you have 100 electrons and 10, uh, sorry, 100 holes and 10 electrons. So you have 110 free carriers, but here you have only 20 free carriers because you get rid out of 90 holes. That's why we, we call this as the depletion phase. Because simply in this phase, you turn your material to be depleted without any free electrons, either electrons or holes. Then you are starting to invert the rayer from being an N type, P type to being an N type. That's why we call this the inversion. So in order to invert your material or your channel from a P type to N type, you do it in two steps. The first step is to get rid of holes, what we call it the ablution. And the second step is, is, step is to convert it into n type, what we call the inversion phase. So back to the uh, presentation slide. Herein, as you can see, this we here, let's open the pointer. So herein, we apply positive voltage. So maybe. I come to the exam and told you, please, my dear students, using this energy band diagram, please indicate if this applied positive voltage on the gate is greater than or smaller than the threshold voltage. Very easy. The sign for a threshold voltage is to turn this layer to be an end time. So let's examine here. So you can see that your substrate, your channel, this is a channel because this is this one. So your channel is still a P time. So you apply a positive voltage, but it seems that this positive voltage is still not enough to convert or to invert this layer, which is a channel to be an end time because this point is still a P time. As you can see, EFS is still below, bar, below EFI or EI. So that's why we call this a depletion region. Now the material is toward being intrinsic, which is the metal case in our example. What if you increase this V threshold more and more? Then that's what happened. Now this is an inversion region because simply the Fermi level is now above the EI level and the material here turned to be an anti. So you have a channel. So now this is the inversion region where electrons can start to conduct from the source of the brain, given that there is a potential on the brain. So this is the difference between the depletion region and the inversion region. And using this, you can find a relation for the threshold voltage, which is the voltage needed to turn this layer to be an end type, as you can see here. This point where I'm pointing my pointer, this point is an n type point where EF is above EI, as you can see. And this is a relation where you can use to calculate this phi as or this threshold potential. Okay, so 
using some uh, uh, okay let's do it here so this is the uh, uh, the concept where for uh, 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 threshold potential from another point of view so in the first part in part number one we have discussed together the threshold concept from the source drain point of view herein we discuss again the threshold concept, but from the metal oxide semiconductor uh, uh, metal semiconductor oxide point of view. Both have the same meaning, but just with different uh, perspectives. Let me say. So, what we are going to do in the next part, my dear students, is that we are going to discuss what's called the MOSFET capacitance and the MOSFET charge accumulation. Why we have a MOSFET? Why we have a, an, an internal capacitor in a MOSFET? How we can calculate or estimate this capacitor, and how charge accumulates in the channel. This will be the, the topic for part number three, which should be the final part with this section. Thank you very much for your concentration, and let me see you, inshallah, in the next part, part number three with our most good job. Thank you very much.